Hi, Megan, and thank you so much for joining me. I'm so excited that we get to talk to you on your virtual book tour in my favorite city that I normally would get to see you in Dubai. Thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. I wish that we were in person right now. That's my only regret, but it's still lovely to talk to you. Well, every year I think we've been just getting more and more exciting. So I think the world's decided we need a break to come back next year with something even bigger and better. Absolutely. I think so too. I think in a way this year, I'm just trying to look at the positives that everything that we can do moving forward, we are all going to appreciate so much. The thought of just being able to travel again is the most exciting thought to me. And the thought of landing back in Dubai is, ah, oh, I just can't wait. It's just, I think we've just all taken travel for such, I guess, for granted, really, that we could hop on a plane and be anywhere we wanted to be. And, you know, with your schedule of being in France one day and Dubai the next day, I think we've really gotten an opportunity to appreciate what that meant for us and what and how much we needed it, really. Yeah, I think we will just, the entire world will be so grateful to be able to travel again. And we will appreciate it just, just so much more, so much more. Well, despite the challenges of this year, there's still really exciting things happening. And you've just released the illustrated world of Couture, the fashion book for this year, which I have to say, when I looked at all the beautiful pictures and the copy, my mind was going crazy with all the things we could have done. Oh. But take away from how amazing the book is. And more excitingly, you've included Dubai in it as one of the key cities. Why did you include Dubai this year? Oh, I mean, when I was even in the very initial stages of working on the book, I knew that Dubai would be in this book. You know, it, well, Couture has become something that, you know, it started in, in Paris, of course, but it is, it's global. And it's, what's really interesting about it is that it's very much takes on a different life in different cities around the world. And I think the way in which it um, has become such a big part of the Middle East and Dubai was really interesting to me. So it was always definitely going to be included in the book. I think Dubai is just one of those cities that, you know, coming from a country like South Africa originally, the world of fashion and the, the intensity and the opulence and just the wearability, you know, every single <laughs> person is just dressed head to toe in beautiful designer pieces. Um, and I think if anything, this city really encapsulates what couture is in a lifestyle you know context the fact that so many amazing people are wearing it weddings here are just beautiful and full of it so i think it's a it's a great inclusion for the city um yeah. but what was your personal experience you've been here a couple of years now you know you've done we've done events together you've worked in private commissions and projects together what would you say is your love affair with couture in the middle east I think, honestly, I was so blown away when I very first started working and doing projects in the Middle East, even just before we started working together on book tours, but at the level of uh, uh, of the way women wear couture. I mean, because when I think of the Middle East, it's there's such a strong sense of tradition in terms of how women dress, and that's on one side. And yet on the other side, I've never seen women more confidently embrace couture than in the Middle East. And, you know, the way in which they wear it with confidence and, you know, it's not, it's not that everyone wears the same designer. It's very much across the complete spectrum of different designers. It's just, I think the amount of couture that people wear in the Middle East as well is something that you just don't, you don't see anywhere else. I mean, I, I, one of my most fond memories was illustrating at a royal wedding in the Middle East. And I was there sketching the bride and there was about 400 guests, all women. And they were all, as I think from a, between around 20 and 30 and were all 400 of them dressed in couture. And I had never ever seen that in my life I couldn't get over it I was sketching it thinking even if you went to the you know Academy Awards not every not th not this amount of people would be dressed in couture it was just mind-blowing I don't think I could sleep even after it I was so just amazed I think that's what I've never seen in any other culture the amount of um people who I guess have it and who 
and and really wear it and and it's I, it's fascinating yeah. I mean, you must see, what do you think? I mean, you are originally from South Africa. You've lived in Dubai a long time now and you do a lot of things within fashion. What, what is your perspective? I mean, you must see a lot of people embracing this and, you know, wearing couture. Uh, I just love it. I mean, the city that I am fortunate enough to call home is, like you say, it's just such a colourful, diverse... I think people on the outside don't understand the beauty and the diversity of the sort of melting pot of cultures that we have here until like you, you come in year after year and you see it and that's exactly it. I mean, you see women in stores spending huge amounts of money, but on such good quality, the eye for design, the, the choice of variety. Um, every brand in the world is here. Every yeah. designer house is here. Yeah. Um, and I think you see it in, in the way that you know, international designers have adapted to the market, you know, sometimes with the longer sleeves, the slightly more conservative designs. Um, you know, you've got the industrial rich and the industrial wealthy and the earned wealthy, and then you've got the royals um, <laughs> and sort of the families that have really come up, you know, building empires. And the women in those families and the men have really grown to appreciate what couture is and appreciate fashion and appreciate design. And it's attainable. Um, it's not a boastful way i mean most of those weddings that you've been fortunate enough i've attended one in my tenure span in the country i've attended one yeah um and that's when you see it. it's just their family that see it it's not a external show of wealth it's just an appreciation you know that's and that's that is actually really true and 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 it's funny because when i describe to other people that at this wedding there was 400 women dressed in couture they're so every single person there was so uh they're not show offy. I don't know what the right word is. They are yeah. very humble about it, and and yet they're so confident. So it, it it's a it's mind blowing because there were women in these ginormous um, Dolce and Gabbana couture dresses, but they had a really like sort of sweet, soft, you know, <laughs> speaking voice, yeah. and and yet they were completely comfortable wearing these, in like just outrageously uh, embellished and huge and giant uh, bellowing tool and I just yeah I just thought there's something culturally I guess too that if you're within that world you've grown up with it and you um feel proud to wear uh, to look individual and wear these pieces it was just like like nothing that I have ever seen I think the world on the whole has kind of I don't want to say has been forced to because that sounds negative but has yeah. the Middle East has really earned its stripes in terms of coming up and saying we are a market that needs to be recognized we are a market that spends obviously um, yeah. and we are a market that needs to be catered for i mean some of the front row tickets that you might not see at fashion shows are just private buyers from the middle east you know women will go with their mothers their sisters their daughters their nieces their friends on planes during fashion week and this is what i want to ask you about <laughs> This is honestly, when I, when I knew that we were doing this interview, I thought to myself, oh, I have to ask Zahira about this. So we hear about this and, and this is what I cannot wait to confirm with you. But we always hear that women in the Middle East um, get together with their girlfriends and they charter a private plane and they fly to Paris Couture Week and they attend the shows and have it all kind of bagged up and sent back to the hotel room. And... Honestly, I mean, my girlfriends and I are just really trying to get to a restaurant at the moment to, to catch up. Um, but does this really happen? Please tell me it does. It's not, not like I'll ever get to probably yeah. do, but I just want to know someone's doing this somewhere. Are they really doing this? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and yeah. It's, not, it's not uncommon. Um, you know, your design houses here, from your Dior to your Chanel to your Zahara Mirage, they've got like curated lists. You know, you get the sort of public faces, maybe the influencers, maybe the more... Um, visible, you know, for optics shoppers or, or wearers yeah. of the brand. But then there's the list that actually matters to them more than any other list, and that's their private shoppers or their private clients. Yes. And yes. those are the women that would get their families together. And it's all very quiet. It's all very private. It's all very, you know, they're the ones with the bags come in and you go into store. Well, you know, a, a little old me will go in for like the latest whatever that I've just saved up for. And I'm like, sorry, ma'am, that's <laughs> out and I said, but that came in yesterday yeah, yeah our private shoppers have shopped it before it's reached the store floor you so know they do complaints well and this is really interesting because i think this well even that one aspect that you've just touched on is something that when i was researching a lot about couture 
even outside of the Middle East, these the private buyers really are the ones that keep this craftsmanship and this history of couture alive because you know the general population can't you know can't buy it and can't um, necessarily do these things but you know a lot of the people that collect it and uh, many of the people that I spoke to are very much it's almost like supporting the arts is how they see it you know they really and 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 even one particular piece might take you know, um, an enormous amount of people to make, and that's a lot of jobs that go into making those pieces. It's these people that do collect them are really continuing with this craftsmanship and really keeping it alive. Because ironically, back when couture started, there was many more couture buyers than there is today. So the world has kind of changed in that way, but, um, but it's interesting and anything else that you can kind of share with us or give us secrets to about um about the middle east because i do feel like it's it's very secretive it's fascinating it's fascinating is the only word so my first job in dubai was marketing manager for a luxury fashion group oh, okay um and there i was from south africa fresh chicken that's just arrived super young really impressionable um, and we'd go into meetings with marketing groups and they'd go, yes, well, so-and-so came in today and she spent 50 and she's ordered for $150,000. And you just sit there going, what? And this is a very oh. casual day at the mall. It's a casual drop in at the mall. Oh, I like that and that and that and that. And this is the bill. Mm. Um, so the most sort of the first thing that really jumped out at me was just the sheer spend power within the market. And yeah. it's not, you wouldn't know it unless you work back in, you know, that I'm yes. sure the girls at Dior or Chanel would have far more interesting stories to tell you than I ever <laughs> could. But, you know, I know people that even aren't from the Middle East that have just lived here and sort of built their wealth here and built their businesses here and thrived here that are the first call that Dior makes when something new comes in, you know, Dior does yeah. pop up um, for them specifically. They get invited to fashion week, tickets provided, flights provided, or fly yourself there on your private jet. All that you hear is true. The only thing I would say is a lot of the um, the boastfulness that you hear isn't always true. Um, no, I mean, yeah. You know, everyone here is is really wonderful and, and really, you know, earn their money, whether it's through family wealth or royalty or whatever. Um, they have the ability to spend and they do. Mm. Um, and it's not a negative thing. No, and you know, I can say, you know, it's been, I think it's been about 10 years now that I've been doing a lot of work back and forth in the Middle East. Um, and I would agree with you, there's a, an enormous sense of modesty that comes with what a lot of people in the Middle East do have. And it, it's definitely not in a boastful way. And it's, um, it's always quite uh, understated even though as i talked about earlier their confidence with wearing it but the way in which they present it is always in a way that is um very quiet that's why it's that, i think that's why it's quite mysterious because they're not not flashy about it um and i think that's what makes it really really fascinating what about designers so i i mean i always notice even when we do our book launches um, and we should talk about that for a second too, <laughs> because I, I am so sad we're not there now. And I, I talked the other day about, uh, Martina and I were reminiscing about the book tour and thinking, oh, it's always so warm and we're always at the Fairmont and, you know, and so many people asked me different things about the book tour at the end of it, based on what I post or what images they see. And everyone always asks me about the cakes at the book launches that we <laughs> have at Fairmont. And every year you, you, we send you the book. So you get the book and you know what the theme is. And then that is pretty much it. And then and until Martina and I arrive on pretty much the day of the book launch, we don't know anything that we're going to see. We have no idea. And every year you just completely blow us away. We've never, I mean, New York year, you had a, you actually had a New York taxi. <laughs> I still don't know how that happened. Well, that's my favorite city, right? We've got a little bit of a favoritism going on that year. Yeah, but how amazing are how amazing are the um, the chefs at the Fairmont? We should just touch on that, just because the cakes yeah. are mind blowing. They really are. That's like couture, isn't it? I feel like the what they do. Yeah. 
I mean, yeah. I mean, every year for me, that's that's definitely a highlight. As you know, yeah. um, it was incredibly humbling that from year one, you kind of said, look, I trust you um, yeah. to do what you want. And for me, that's my massive creative fix for the year, which, which I'm definitely missing this year. But I think when you've got such a collection of trust from your end um, and such an incredible product to bring to life, the challenge is how do I outdo it every year? And secretly <laughs> make it I'm a little bit relieved that I got a break so I can- You've got this year off. <laughs> yeah, I can reset for next year. But it's, you know, a lot of the ideas and stuff is, is collective. You know, food is not my thing. I sit down with the team and I say, this is my direction for the event. This is what I want to bring out. This is what my ideas are. And they pretty much run with it. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, amazing. It's, it's changed a lot on a lot of fronts. So a lot of our usual teams are changed up and have moved on to different projects and spaces. Um, but I definitely think just having a partner like Fam on Farm has been, for yeah. me, it's been a massive um, stress reliever because I, I could not for the life of me tell you how to design a pan au chocolat or a oh. dessert or the tiramisu shots that we had oh, one year. Oh, good. Oh, I don't know how to eat them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just really good at eating it all. Um, no, I know that's that's always my whenever we first walk into the room at whatever the event at the book launch in Dubai, what you've created, and we'd have no idea. I always see the food and the and the cake, and I always am so distracted. I just want to eat it and photograph it and touch it, and it's just um, it's it's such a it's such an interesting and special part of the tour. And I think too, and I commented on this the other day in an interview that the people who come to the Dubai book launches are so chic and and so international i think that's maybe that's another thing we could even touch on that the middle east is very international in terms of the different nationalities that live there and work there and have really built the city with um with the emirati and so how what do you do you think that in terms of fashion and couture has had an influence all the different you know nationalities and people that really make up the city I definitely think the diversity contributes to the, the flavor, shall we say. Um, yeah. I think as a city, people bring a part of themselves, a part of their preference, a part of their style to the city. And that's sort of added to the, 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 the fabric that makes it what it is. Mm -hmm. um, but often when I'm outside the Middle East and you tell people where you live, they expect you to say that you wear an abaya to work, you have to cover your hair, and it's the complete opposite, you know. Part of the mystery that you touched on earlier, which makes the city so incredible, are the women that wear the abayas, but underneath those abayas, they're just beautifully dressed head to toe with the most amazing shoes and most amazing bags. You know, I went into an incredible store the other day to get a second piercing, and a majority of the women in there were local women getting their ears curated, um, you know, by Maria Cash, who does the most incredible, wow. delicate, beautiful, you yes. know, jewelry and accessorizing. And I think Amazing. it's a combination of the local flavor and the local flair and the local style. The local women are extremely stylish and extremely yeah. particular, extremely elegant. And then the internationals kind of add to that. So it just sort of, really creates that hub of fashion and style and Dubai has really made its mark in the last couple of years of being a city that people need to take note of whether it's style or tourism or fashion um, and and it's something that I think when we do as expat have to move on which unfortunately many of us will it's something that will be very very hard to believe definitely for me extremely hard I can't to see you leaving there <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to leave there you, you're no. having <laughs> dinners in the desert and oh my god I can't see you leaving I I, I, I actually I, thought about our dinner in the desert the other day because I oh went out and the weather's just overnight just cool so for oh those that you know don't know obviously we get to September October and our temperatures just start cooling and it becomes bearable yeah um, and I went out into the desert the other morning for a photo shoot and I thought oh remember that lovely sunset we had on the dunes oh. and the beautiful lighting and that was incredible. Yeah. We still, um, Martina and I still say that was one of the most ex amazing experiences that we've ever had because it felt like we were, it, it almost felt like we were on a set or it wasn't real. Yeah. It just, I think the light and just the endless sand dunes were just, just. Well, I've got, a, I've got a list that's now got 12 months and growing to take you both to when you get back. So. Ah, oh, yeah. Well. <laughs> new little corners and new little areas to create new memories. And, that, and that's the other thing about the city is it's just, so beautiful and it's constantly evolving and it's such a great mix of old and new when you throw fashion and couture into that mix 
it's got the perfect setting for it. You know, it's got the yeah. landscape, it's got the dunes, it's got, it's like everyone is sort of prepped for fashion to just arrive. And when it did, it's just flourished and you know why. Yeah, yeah. And I think from what I can see outside of the Middle East, that it's become an area that all of the design houses are very conscious of, um, both in collections. You see now a lot of collections include a lot of pieces that would suit the region, which they may not have done in the past. And they really, Dubai and, and other areas in the Middle East have really become a destination to show collections. I think that's really interesting as well. There's, it's, it's become an area that not only are there a lot of, you know, um, clientele that are there that can actually purchase these pieces, but I think it's, it's just become one of the international destinations that is associated with couture. So, and I think, I think that's going to be really interesting. It'll be interesting to see also that flavor of your traditional designers that you have there and how that works into couture. And, and that's actually a question I might ask you. Are there a lot of, so aside from the designers that you and I know well, the Dior's and the Dolce & Gabbana's and, and Chanel and everything, designers that are more local that are making pieces, is that something that you that is also revered in the Middle East? I think in the last couple of years, and obviously, you know, when I talk, I'm talking predominantly Dubai, but it doesn't limit it to Dubai. You know, Saudi's a market that's really awakened and pretty much on par. Kuwait, there's a lot in the region that are similar. Dubai is probably just the loudest voice in, yeah. <laughs> in the room. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, there's also quite a, a strong affinity to supporting local brands and local designers, you know, from your local high street type levels all the way up to couture. Um, you know, whether you're talking Lebanon, whether you're talking Middle East as in Emirati designers, there's definitely, and I think this year has done that to a lot of countries where you want to support local and you want to sort of uplift the businesses that you have in the region. And there's incredible talent in the Middle East. Yeah. Um, whether it's art, whether it's fashion, whether it's music, there's incredible talent. And I think this year has really forced people to introspect a little bit and find the talent. Um, and there's definitely the support for it. I don't think there'll ever be a case of choosing one or the other. It will always be a marriage of the two. So a little bit of, um, you know, we've seen brands like Zuhair Murad and Eli Saab out of Lebanon that's really flourished globally. And I think Amazing. there'll be a lot more to come out of this region because there really is incredible talent within it. Yeah. Oh, it's so exciting. I just wish we were there at a show. We need a couture show right now <laughs> in Dubai. I found the out with the sunset. <laughs> Sorry. I found the absolute perfect spot for it too. So I mean, when we get it back together, we'll just have to go back to couture and start with this book and move forward. So we I might need so. to just do a couple of them. You know, it, it would be yes. unfair to leave it out. It <laughs> Definitely. We'll just pretend this year didn't happen. <laughs> Yeah. Start afresh, 2021. <laughs> no one's aging, no one's growing, nothing's changing. We'll just pick up. So yeah, yeah, right where we left off. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you for thank you so much for doing this today. I think this has been a great insight into the mysteries and the, you know, the really exciting things that do happen in Couture in the Middle East. I think there's so much. I mean, you know, when when we spoke about arranging our virtual book tour, there's just so much about this region that yeah. I would like people to know, you know, and I'm only, I've only been here 10 years. I think people that are older or, you know, if you could interview along the way or the process would have so much more to add, but it's just such a vibrant, diverse, beautiful, mysterious region. Um, and I just think we're so excited to have Dubai as a part of um, a collection of couture that's been perfectly illustrated as you always do. And oh, to celebrate yeah. a city that has so much to offer, I think is incredible. Well, hopefully I did everyone proud in my book. <laughs> I think everyone will. Well, it's, oh. it's going to be circulating very fast here. I think. And I think it's the ultimate festive gift, um, gift for a girlfriend, for a birthday. So um, Good. I, uh, even my orders might have occupied the first shipment that have come in. But <laughs> I feel everyone's going to love it and it's going to be hugely celebrated in the region. So thank you for including us. No, my pleasure. My pleasure. Well, lovely talking to you and I look forward to doing this in person, in yes. the desert with a sunset and a nice yes. dress. <laughs> all of it, just all the good stuff. <laughs> well, Meg, good luck with the rest of the um, virtual book tour. I'm not sure where, where you're off next, but we're so This is my last out. stop. I saved you for the oh, end, which is strange oh. because normally we do on the real book tour, we do it yeah. Yes, but because of timing and different things, this yeah. is um, 
this is the last stop. So this is the last stop oh, before next it. year when we do the real thing. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for spending with us in the desert. Um, yes. And we cannot wait to get the books into everyone's hands and see you in person. Amazing. I can't wait. Thank you. Take care. Okay. Bye, Zahira. Bye.